All right, I think this is, can you believe it, the start of week four of uh, Foundations of Instructional Design. Uh, so Brandon's going to lead us today. If he has bandwidth issues, I'll just end the meeting. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. we'll get through. This week, I think, is pretty pretty straightforward week. So I will let Brandon take it away. If you have any questions, unmute yourself at any time and uh, speak up, and and we'll uh, we'll get going. So I will, Brandon, you're going to share your, oh, I need to promote you, sorry. Make presenter. Make presenter. All right. And now you can share your screen and we'll be good to go. Share my screen. Am I sharing? Yep. We see it. Excellent. Week four. It's going by really fast. This week isn't a bad week at all as far as the topic and the assignments was required. Um, backward design. Um, my little uh, presentation here will. Uh, Wrong, wrong button. Um, before we jump into this week, how is everyone doing with where we are so far in the class? It's been almost four weeks. We're starting our fourth week as far as assignments, the, the, uh, the pace of the course, readings, discussions, any concerns, questions, heartache? Perfect. I'm old. I keep forgetting I have homework. <laughs> that is an issue. <laughs> we keep forgetting we need to provide feedback to you. So, yeah. And I need to apologize. I, I, I have been slacking on my uh, keeping up to date with my grading. So just keep those emails coming to me saying that you have turned things in. I, I will get them updated. So uh, thanks for being patient with me. I looked, th I looked through the TPAC submission, the redesign for my class today. They looked really good. So you guys are doing well with that. Yeah. Any other concerns besides doing homework? That's where yeah, I can't get on. Can you guys hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Oh, I can't see you guys. It's okay. We're not very cute. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, click on the presenter's little triangle, and that should show you what's being shared. We have a big screen saying taking our polls. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. it. Okay, that's it. We are. So we're just seeing where we are right now before we jump, in, jump into this week. So uh, backward design is where we are this week. Um, that's the topic. Design is to uh, have purpose and intentions to plan and execute. That is taken from uh, Webster's, I think, right there. Um, as a teacher, you are a designer, and your students are your clients. So keep that in mind as I'm sure you do already as you prepare your lesson plans and plan your activities for the day and week and unit that um, you are designing everything around your student success and their well beings. But uh, backwards design, what is it? Um, anyone heard of it before? Anybody using it? Like to use it? I heard about it like 10 years ago. And that's one of the things that intrigued me about teaching because I wasn't a teacher yet. Oh, maybe it was 14 years ago. And I'm just flying and having fun, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, so I've heard I heard of it a long time ago. So the the whole concept intrigued you, the backward design. That's cool. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, this is Heidi. I just when I went to Utah State, I just graduated three years ago, and our whole focus of our whole teaching program was backward design. Start with your goal or your standard, and then design your whole, you know, everything around that educational standard. So you start with that, and then you kind of go backwards. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's what I, I just automatically do it. It's how I learned how to teach. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, it's a. It, that's exactly what it is. It's um, deciding, determining the end before the beginning. Um, the, uh, the, the outcomes, um, the, your assessments before you plan your, your unit and um, that designing your folk, changing your focus of your design for your course and, and your lessons. Um, a question, Th these, uh, these uh, comments here are taken straight from the reading this week. So um, you can find all these in the reading. Uh, but how will learning be designed so the learner's capacities are developed through use and feedback? So that is the, what you're trying to do is design them so they're learning what you want them to learn. Um, the, the old saying, you don't know where you're headed until you get there. Um, 
as educators, I know when when I was in in the classroom, I like to point out what I'm teaching and 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 how well I I teach and the activities I I do. Um, but not all the time there is a, a clear outcome, a clear desired re result of why we are doing what what we are doing. Um, you can read this quote, this uh, quote here. I'm, I don't have to read it to you, but um, the one, sentence there in the center. How will we distinguish merely interesting learning from effective learning? I know we can all probably do some really interesting lessons and our kids learn some interesting things, but it will be effective learning. And that's kind of the point of backward design is um, um, the effective learning for the students. And it's not about you learning new technology skills, but um, implying or taking what you what we are learning and, and doing and using that in your creating of your lessons. So there are some key design questions that you can ask as you are designing your, your lessons. What should students understand as a result of the activities and content covered? Just because you have to teach certain things to the core, there, there's reasons for that and trying to figure out what it is you want your students to understand after they get finished with that. Um, what experiences through through the lectures and and all, all those things um there are three stages to the um, backward design model the first one as heidi said is heidi was that you who said that if it was thank you uh, is uh, um, identified your desired results as you have your goals in mind at the front from the very beginning um your second stage is to de determine acceptable evidence this is your evaluations your um your summative and formative evaluations. And then after you, you have determined your goals and your evaluations, then you plan your actual instruction, what you're going to do with um, within your class to do that. And, and the other side there is another way to look at it. Uh, the book has another um, model, another some other arrows leading through, but it's the same, the same concept of the, the three stages of identifying, determining, and then planning. Um, look at it this way with the, your uh, building, you want to create cupcakes, you want to be a chef and you want to, your desired results is to create these masterful cupcakes um, with cool star sprinkles on top of them. You know, what, that, that is your, your goal and what's going to be your, your evidence of, of you accomplishing that, that goal and then your learning experience of um, the instruction going through the uh, learning, looking at the recipe. And some of you may have already done, let me, sorry to jump in, Brandon, oh, no, uh, the, the project-based learning class. Uh, some of you may be taking that next, uh, next time around. Uh, backwards design is hugely important with, with project-based learning. You have to know what you want the kids to be able to do or make or uh, discover or, you know, what the, what the end is before you can figure out how to get there. So we talk about it in that course as well, uh, but we'll, we'll use that for our, for for a lesson construct or unit construction uh, for this course. The reading like, gives it. Yeah, it'll be like the next seven weeks we're working on. Yeah. Yeah, figuring out where we're where we're going to be and, and working our way back to that. So. Well, we'll get there in just just a second. The the book gave a or the the reading. I like the example they gave of coaching. Um, you you have you have a a learner, your athlete. Um, how how do you know they have mastered what you want them to? to do um it's not what evidence on the the practices but out in, in the field when, when they're on on their own um do they really get it when they're in the field um playing the game and do they really have what it takes to understand and have the knowledge and the skills so they can do it on their own or they need you there in the game to to participate so i, I like that example since a lot of a lot of you in these small districts have multiple hats to wear, including coaching. So I thought that was good. So your assignments for this week, um, reading chapter one of Understanding by Design, then start thinking about your final project. And with that, you will complete just page one of the template. It is a six page template just this week. Page one is all that's required. It's just just some thoughts going to put down, trying to get your, uh, your end. Um, project in mind. And, and there's, and there's a bunch of check boxes on the bottom of page yeah. one. Ignore those. You just do those as you go. So it's basically, you know, fill out 
who you are and what you're going to do, and then a, a summary of your of your project plan. Yeah, those check boxes really confused me when I first looked at it. Like, what are these yeah. boxes for? And, so I, yeah, and I need to apologize right now. <laughs> I, I cringe when somebody makes me open up Word. Uh, I was going to convert it to Google, but there were there was too much formatting with all the little circles and and everything. So um, works just just fine. Yeah, it works fine. So, but if you have issues, let us know. We'll see what we can do. So the uh, your template will look like this. Um, this six pages, just the, the first page that you will do. Just your basic information for your. Um, project or your unit or the subject. So this is this page here. It's all you're completing. Easy enough. Um, you can start looking at these other pages if you want to get some ideas of what's going to be required of you coming on in the next couple of weeks. But the reading um, this week does have this template written out exactly what's going to be required of you. So if you uh, now I'm looking at the template within the reading get some ideas of what's going to be required and what, how you can fill it out and what works for what you want done. So uh, any questions with understanding backward designs? Brandon, what if my unit goals change between now and a couple of weeks? You can't change it. They're set today in stone forever. No. <laughs> no. This, <laughs> This is set in Jello. <laughs> like so, uh, it's perfect. so we, we know things are going to change, and you, you start working on, on a unit plan, and two weeks from now, you want to change your whole unit plan. We want this to be meaningful to you. Don't just do it just to do the course, just to get the credit. Yeah, the credit's nice, and um, the endorsement is nice at the end, but really, you want it to be practical for what you are doing. So if you start on it and you realize you want to change it up for what's going to be meaningful to you, do it. And if you have questions about if if your goal is too small or too big, you know, if you want some feedback, throw that out in the discussion, send us an email um, or text us or whatever. Let us know if you if you want some ideas or just be able to bounce some some ideas off of us to uh, to focus in on what you want to do. But it shouldn't be painful. Don't make it painful. Yeah. Don't make it bigger than, than it needs to be. <laughs> Make it meaningful what you're doing. Hey, Christine. So, what do you think about the backward design? Um, think you're gonna like it, not like it? Do you like the concept? What you just heard of it, or think it's completely awful? What are your thoughts and opinions on it? Those who are new to it. Um, I will comment. I like it because it helps me focus because I feel like when it comes to our content, we have a wide range of things to share. And so it just helps me focus a little bit better on what specifically I want to teach for one specific day or week or unit. So, yeah. Thanks, Mandy. Great. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Kim. Uh, I think I'll like it too because I work with kids who, uh, since I'm a special education teacher, I work with kids that may not be able to meet the common core standards and so I need to think what they can do and where I want them to reach and so I, I will use this then to design what goals I want them to have and I'll need to go backward to develop the instruction to get there. That's great. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, I, and I think if you really look at what you are doing as a teacher, probably doing a lot of this designing anyway, most of you, which is great. It's a great way to teach. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, we have to write our objectives on the board that we're going to be accomplishing that week or that day. And so this kind of fits along with that. We we know the objective. We know where we're headed. We just got to yeah. figure out how to get there. How to get there. Yeah, just remember it's a, it's a three-week it chunk. Be, it may be new as far as the name, but Oops. the concept may be doing it already. And just remember it's a three-week chunk. Your plan is a, you know, a three-week unit or three, you know, 
it's not a day, it's not a week, it's it's not a month, but it's um, you know three weeks, something that fits into that. What if um, like I teach high school and we have seventy minute days? Um, what if you finish a unit in a week and a half? You meet with them seventy minutes every day. Mm-hmm. That's well, awesome. no, seventy minutes, seventy minutes every other day. Every other day, yeah. So maybe schedule. So that's about right, yeah. So a week and a half is okay, rather than three weeks, as long as it fills the unit. Uh, yeah, if you if you double up those those, am I not? Do you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Oh, the it's yelling at me because it hears my fan run in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you combine two of those days into one, I mean, it's assuming, you know, like a 40, 45 minute um, okay. time period. Yeah. So if you double those up and have three, three things per week, that would probably two or three things per week that work. Okay. Yeah. So your final project, there's a, a link here with the, um, do the, you can do it on this format with the uh, template um, when, when you get to the end or if you go to week 12 in the module, um, final project information, something Clint showed last week, um, it's kind of a little more streamlined and it's kind of nice. So, so that's going to be your final project. And each week when we do things, it will be put into here. So it's not, you have this whole new thing to do the last week, but we will work on it each week as we go through this course in the next few weeks. Again, there's places here on this one to dump in all the link to your different graphics and things that you are doing right now. So you're going to get in as you're doing it. Any questions that you have for this week as far as what's required of you? Any our expectations for you? Well, this week shouldn't be bad as far as time wise. The reading's not that long, even though it says it's 22 pages. Uh, the last half of, of the readings, uh, overview of the template and um, what the template in includes and what you can put in. So it's not that bad as far as reading and just your, your lesson plan. So go to it, have fun. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. as a reminder, try to get in and make your first post by Sunday so that uh, we can respond and reflect after that before Wednesday. But everything's been looking good on my end, you guys. The participation wise discussion, everything's been looking good. So we appreciate your efforts and Keep it up. Yeah, awesome. Well, Henry, anything else? I think I'm done from my side. Clint, do you have anything you want to add? I just did. I'm good. All right, well. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for participating in the class and sharing your comments with one another and trying to get in good things. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See ya. See ya next week.